Snastruck. Hello and welcome to part 4 of this series featuring the wildly unrealistic idea of imagining a list of arcade games on a home console like a Super Nintendo. Okay, obviously some games would have absolutely no chance of working. I mean, look at Jurassic Park here. You think that's gonna work on a Super Nintendo? Hell no. But it's still fun to imagine, and more than that, I'm hoping these videos also highlight certain arcade games that you may not have been aware of, so you can check them out yourself on the MAME emulator or whichever way you can. I've already covered a ton of titles, everything from Cadillac and dinosaurs, Windjammers, Ghostbusters, G.I. Joe, all that good stuff, so make sure you check out parts 1 through 3 if you haven't yet. Let's start with this insane looking Jurassic Park game. This is a rail shooter that takes place a few months after the film's story concludes, presumably after you drew the short straw and were sent over to the island after it was abandoned to try and contain the dinosaurs somehow. You're riding a vehicle and just shooting anything that moves, and this was one of those arcade cabinets with a moving seat like Afterburner, and yeah it's not nearly as fun to play without that, but still just the artistry here is so freaking cool looking, blending 2D sprites and 3D polygons. This game supports up to two players and while this game may be very, very simple, it's an exhilarating playthrough. Let's stick with gallery shooters with Nom 1975. Now this is a game that absolutely could have been on the Super Nintendo, although it was made by SNK and it did get a home console release for the Neo Geo. Still, not a whole lot of people are aware of this one. It's a wild gun style game where you're expected to dodge just as often as you shoot and destroy stuff. It's two player compatible with all sorts of weapon upgrades and extra items like grenades. And what I really like here is that if you save a hostage, she runs over, grabs a gun and starts shooting at enemies to help you out that is awesome so yeah if you like wild guns you'll really like this one Here's an older gallery shooter titled Devastators, made by Konami. This is one of those forgotten titles because it's never received a home console release, so you could only play this one if the arcade cabinet just happened to be in your area. That's the thing about these old arcade games. If you didn't have a particular cabinet in your neighborhood, you'd never know that game even existed. Anyway, Devastators is more of a real shooter type game that's like Contra meets that G.I. Joe arcade game I talked about in part two. And the game supports up to two players. There's seven total levels, but this is still a pretty short playthrough. It's a lot of fun though, sometimes simple games like this just do the trick. Here's more of a run and gun title from Data East called Desert Assault. Run around and make stuff go boom, can't go wrong with that, but this one actually has a bit of variety to it with levels where you have to sneak past spotlights and another one where you're getting chased by this poison gas creeping up on you. There's also vehicles you can ride and enemies make this horrific scream when they're defeated. There's only five levels here, but this one is still a lot of fun. It's four player compatible featuring four different characters you play as who all have their own weapon upgrades. This one reminds me a bit of something like Sunset Riders meets Metal Slug. So if you dig those games, you'll love this one. Moving on to beat-em-ups, here's one of my favorites. When most people think Battletoads, they think of the impossible NES game, but what they should think of is this kick-ass beat-em-up that was only released for arcades. The sprite animation, backgrounds, and settings here are incredible looking, and the music is done by David Wise, so this game is the maximum Battletoads experience without the ridiculous crap like the Turbo Tunnel. It supports up to three players, and there's six total levels. The movesets here aren't that spectacular, but that's not really the point. The sheer spectacle here is what sells this one. You can play Battletoads Arcade today on Xbox One as part of the Rare Replay compilation released just a few years ago. The highest recommendation for this one. Night Slashers is another beat-em-up, this one made by Data East, and if you're into cartoonishly over-the-top levels of gore, then this game is for you. You start the game in a van plowing over a horde of mutants and monsters before fighting limbless zombies that try and puke on you, only for their heads to burst open and spill all over the ground. I couldn't help but laugh at some of the gore here, it's like if Splatterhouse were a traditional Final Fight beat-em-up. So yeah, if this is the kind of stuff you're looking for, you won't be disappointed at all in Night Slashers. Growl is a beat-em-up that did get a home console port on the Sega Genesis, and while that version is still pretty good, nothing touches the arcade original. This is just a solidly made beat-em-up that's four-player compatible, featuring all sorts of weapons that you can use to cause an insane amount of carnage. There's four different characters you can switch between throughout seven different stages. I really enjoy the comic book style feel of this one. It really helps it stand out a bit. Growl got a re-release on the Taito Legends 2 compilation, but the game is heavily censored. Play the original arcade version instead, any way you can. 
Metamorphic Force is another forgotten game that stayed in arcades and never received a home console release. Geez, one of these days Konami has to put together some kind of compilation to get some of these games out there on modern consoles one way or another. This game runs on the same hardware as Mystic Warriors, which I covered in a previous episode, but I get a big X-Men vibe from this one. This game is frenetic, and it has that typical beat-em-up craziness to it, where you're fighting these bizarre-looking anthropomorphic creatures. It's structured kind of like Golden Axe, where you have to beat up these rodent things that come along in order to gain power-ups that allow you to change into a beast. So yeah, Metamorphic Force is a giant amalgamation of like five or six different games, but that's definitely not a bad thing. Here's a beat-em-up that's a little different. Lightbringer has an isometric viewpoint and is a bit slower paced than the other beat-em-ups here. There's a bit of exploration as you move from room to room finding different items and power-ups, but I should also mention that this one has some platforming to it, and I know some people hate that and I can't say I blame them, but Lightbringer at least provides a distinct shadow beneath your character to make your life a bit easier. I really liked this one. It has a land stalker kind of a feel to it, but with a Knights of the Round beat-em-up style with parrying and blocking. It's a bit of a unique twist on the genre that many should be able to appreciate. Switching gears, here's Bubble Symphony, the continuation of the Bubble Bobble series. This one did get ports to Sega Saturn and a couple different compilations, but I still gotta bring this one up, not only because it's a great game, but because the final boss is named Hyper Drunk. How can you not love that? Anyway, this is the familiar Bubble Bobble formula, as you might expect, but the structure is refreshingly different in that there are branching paths that open up after you defeat a boss. Your bubble shot also has a charge to it now as well. So yeah, to hammer home the obvious, if you love a Bubble Bobble, you'll love this game. R-Type Leo has some really interesting trivia associated with it. According to gaming magazines at the time, this game was scheduled to be ported to the Super Nintendo CD peripheral, which was eventually scrapped. And had that happened, this easily would have become one of the top three shoot-em-ups on the system. As it is, it's still a great title and a very solid entry in the R-Type series. It's not as insanely difficult as something like R-Type 3, so it's a little more accessible for newcomers, which I appreciate. And it's also the only R-Type game that's co-op, which is really cool. And of course, it goes without saying, that the settings and enemy design here are fantastic, with some of the bosses taking up nearly half the screen. R-Type Leo is a great time, especially with a second player. Boogie Wings is a shoot-em-up run-and-gun hybrid made by Data East that's really an oddball game. This is the kind of game where it's just an endless amount of stuff thrown at you and you have to use whatever is around you to survive, whether that's controlling this biplane that uses a hook that you can control to attach stuff to it, or this blimp thing, or a tank, or an elephant? What? This game is absolutely nuts in the best possible way, and it's really well structured because you feel like absolutely anything is possible of happening at any time. I mean, look at this grappling hook thing, I'm just swinging a horse around. Now I've got this dead body I can't get rid of, what the hell? Sometimes your vehicle can't take any more damage and you're just on your own as a regular old dude until you find a new vehicle. And even in those situations, this game is still so much fun. Boogie Wings is a really tough playthrough, but it's so worth it, it's completely insane. Finally, I know people love their licensed stuff, so here's a beat em up that totally went under my radar. It's Spider Man, and it's four player compatible, featuring other characters like Hawkeye, Black Cat, and Submariner, among others. This one was developed by Sega and never received any kind of home console port, and it's a pretty decent beat em up for what it is. What makes it stand out is that the perspective switches between a regular beat em up mode and then it zooms out to play through these platformer sections. It's not as crazy and frenetic as something like X Men, but it's still a good time when playing multiplayer multiplayer. It definitely has that comic book visual style going for it. Although, man, Spider-Man, work on your posture a bit, dude. Stop slouching. So yeah, this is just a case of a game where I never saw it in the wild, I never heard of it, and never even hear anybody talking about it. So here you go. Alright, that's all for now. I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.